What's up, everyone? Uh, somebody, somebody sent me a, um, a message the other day saying it would be great if you could run through how you look over your training directly after um, a training session. Um, for me, immortals, he said, like we look at your ride, and because you don't say in the title, like you know, fifteen minute sweet spot or you know, few spike efforts, because you don't give any of that away, um, you just have the power and the heart rate data there. It would be great if you kind of talked us through how you can uh, almost guess what the what the effort is because uh, for me like I said the other day you can go on other pro riders Strava accounts and you can look at their efforts and say if they just have their power to them no heart rate you can't really um, compare because you don't really know how hard the effort is for them um, same goes for riders who don't have anything on that so they just have speed and cadence um, nine times out of ten though you can still make a rough estimate based on like what their speed is going uphill and what you roughly estimate their weight to be uh, obviously a bigger rider is going to go slower up that hill um, for a, a given effort uh, but not to get into too much detail because I want to want to stay on topic with this um, I have picked out a ride that I did back in I think it was April, the end of April. Uh, this was literally like the finishing touches of like quite a big block ahead of Tour de Japan and uh, then the t uh, Tour de Beauce in Canada a few weeks after that. Uh, so what I what I do as soon as possible, like once I've got in for my ride and I've up well I upload straight away. Uh, it's pretty much automatic anyway. The Wahoo connects to the Wi-Fi and it pings it across, so I don't have to do anything. So. I usually um, analyze my training on training peaks, uh, but I'm going to use Strava just for um, for the purpose of this demonstration. Uh, so what I first look at is this kind of home screen of the ride. I'll just check that obviously I've done six hours. Well, yes, obviously I've done six hours because it came up on my on my computer screen. Um, the first thing to note, I think, really is uh, total work. So that will be my calories, so I'll know how much uh, I need to replace. But most importantly, moving forward, you can then, uh, when you know you've got another six-hour ride coming up or five-hour ride or something close around that, you know what your target calories will be for that day. So it prepares you. Again, training load, it's a big number, 320. Uh, it's not the biggest I've ever seen, but uh, usually we say that anything over 150, you can recover from within 24 hours. And then, you know, double that, you're looking at, you know, 300 training load. You're looking at kind of um, maybe two to three days of, uh, of experience fatigue. So you can kind of um, get an overall picture of where you're headed with that one. Um, nothing really to see here, to be honest. Uh, and then, of course, the map and the elevation. An awful lot of elevation gain in this ride um, on the face of it, but... It's a six-hour ride, so in relation, I mean, it's not actually that hilly, uh, I've got to be honest. So we go straight to the analysis, and now this is, this is what I love. Like, I love riders that upload power and heart rate data. I love it. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I do it, because it provides so much of a useful insight. How useful? Well, if you know what you're looking for, and you know what you're kind of you know what the athlete's boundaries are, then it all makes sense. But this is part of what the question I was sent the other day by um, by a fellow cyclist. Uh, he said, how can we look at somebody else's data and interpret things from that that we can potentially use in our training? So I got to work and I thought, well, it's all very well and good if, you've, if the athlete has got like power data and heart rate data because kind of gives something to 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 relate to um so long as you know uh, relatively how hard that athlete is working so for me my max heart rate during the season is like maybe 185 but during the winter it's like 200 um and that's due to like freshness and things like that so um that makes it kind of relatable so long as you know the athlete's limitations now what happens though if, and this is very common, an athlete doesn't have power data or heart rate data, he just, have, he just has cadence and speed. Well, obviously you can't 
make very accurate judgments on what his efforts are or whatever ride it is. But if you look up here at the laps, you can recognize where and when they've done effort. Um, also, you can use segments uh, to, to kind of pick that up as well. Now, with the example I gave the other day with Froomey, um, and on his Strava, he obviously doesn't have his heart rate or his power. Uh, I did kind of a very rough kind of guess as to, because he'll be like 76 kilos, um, you know, how fast will he go up a 5% gradient um, over a certain time? And I'd have these numbers in my head, and I'd think, well, you know, if he's going really, really hard, you know, up a 5% gradient, he could probably average 30 kilometers an hour. So then I'd look at certain sections of the route, and if, if there's, say, a 5K climb where he's gone 30K an hour, particularly if, he, if he's pressed a lap button, you can see he's done an actual effort up there. Um, and then trying to work it out, so you'd say, so 30K an hour might be actually his capacity, so it might be flat out for that given length of time. Um, or working back from that, if he's riding at 25K an hour, that might be, say, at FTP. And then if he's riding at 20k an hour, he might be doing an upper zone 3 effort. So you get the picture. It's not accurate, but you can almost get some kind of feel of what they're doing. Now, for the athletes that do have heart rate power, brilliant. And I love those athletes. So with mine, you can actually highlight sections. So for me, the first section, I did a 20 minute effort up the first climb up the uh, bulk. I did 350 watts. Um, and I average 162 beats per minute. However, that's not the whole story. So, you might be able to notice here that there's a spike. Let's highlight that section. It's 385 for a minute and a half. Let's call it a minute and a half. So that's an over effort. Let's go back to it. We'll look at the next section. You can see it dips down. That's 345 for, for 8 minutes. So I've now come under. Another section, 390 for two minutes. And then the last section, 238 for five. There is a little bit of section there that I missed out, but you get the idea. I basically went pretty hard, settled down into something that was relatively comfortable, so it was roughly FTP. And then I went hard again for two minutes, and then I came back down to FTP, and then a bit of upper zone 3, or zone 3 riding. So there's a lot of kind of um, over and unders, but not, not flat out, if that makes any sense. Now, a lot of you will be used to doing kind of 2040s or that kind of thing. No, they will be flat out. But this is, uh, this is different type of uh, training to your event demands. I've done an, another effort here that's exactly the same. I won't... Uh, I won't kind of go through it again but it's the same average but again look at it closely there's little spikes and then um and then i did i think an hour and a half of just general riding of uh, middle zone two or kind of lower zone two and then there was this section here which included um as you can see spikes and the spikes were a 30 second effort so the 30 second effort was um, was from a rolling start not a standing start uh, normal cadence uh, you know self selected cadence uh, a lot of things you'd be able to tell you know if it was a if it was a torque effort you'd be able to tell because that number might be down to 30 or 40 average um, a torque effort would be uh, more of a strength or power effort uh, a strength effort, sorry, a power effort would be more, you know, the thing I was doing here, which is more of a, more of an all-out sprint, well, not an all-out sprint, but you're talking 30 seconds kind of over. Um, we're looking at like a tiny rest, that, that's probably about 10 seconds, and then back up for another 20 seconds. So it's like 30, 10, 20, so that's a minute. After that minute, we ride a zone two, however long that was, I missed it, apologies, you know, for five and a half, six minutes, and then do it again, uh, and I repeated this six times, 
So that was a little block that I did probably in the yeah, it was in the third hour going into the fourth hour, as you can see up here. Well, it's gone now, but yeah. There it is. And then we hit the climb and we did another steady block of riding. Now we're getting obviously into the nitty gritty. And um, I remember specifically getting into this last hour and I was told to do uh, eight minutes as hard as I could. Um, and I really didn't know what to expect of this. So I found a Strava segment um, and, and hit it pretty hard. And here is the here is the effort itself. I didn't press lap for this. So this is where you could probably need to keep your eyes peeled. Uh, but here's the effort. It was up a 7% gradient, seven and a half, well, 8 minutes, 373 watts, and there's my heart rate data, and it's self-selected cadence again, hence why it's uh, very much all over the place. Um, but that is basically how you can make assumptions out of somebody else's training. That's how you can also, um, I guess, analyze your own training, I mean, and that's how you can make assumptions. Um, which you can then take forward and use in your own training uh, and take the ideas there and run with them.